What's going on YouTube? This is Boxing Wave and we are back with another fight breakdown. This Friday, September 23rd uh, on ESPN at 10 p.m. Eastern, we have Shakur Stevenson defending his super featherweight uh, WBC and WBO titles against Robson Conceso. I believe if you're in the UK, you'll be able to watch the fight on Sky Sports, okay? Um, Shakur Stevenson, he's 25 years old, um, undefeated, uh, 18 wins, zero losses, and nine knockouts, and you have Conceso, who is uh, 17 wins. Um, he has uh, one loss, one defeat against Oscar Valdez, and uh, about eight knockouts. Okay, he's 33 years of age, and he's uh, about a couple, a couple inches taller. I believe he's 5'10", and uh, a couple inches um, in reach advantage to a 70 inch reach, where Shakur is 5'8", and he has uh, 68 inch reach. All right, so let's talk about the fight. I was doing some, some field studies uh, last night, uh, this morning, and uh, both of these guys, uh, they have a common opponent, a recent one against Oscar Valdez. All right, Oscar had fought Conceição right before he fought Shakur Stevenson. Okay, um, very disputed um, fight, you know, very close fight. Uh, I think you could go any way. I don't think it was a robbery. I think one of the scorecards might have been really wide for that fight. But um, a lot of people believe that Conceição beat Oscar Valdez. All right, And it was a lot of drama leading into the fight because uh, Valdez tested positive uh, for some kind of uh, illegal drug. Can't remember. Something about some tea. We're not going to get into all of that. But um, very, very, very um, debatable fight. All right. And uh, Shakur Stevenson beat Oscar Valdez in the very next fight. All right. Pretty much winning nine rounds of three, two rounds, 10 rounds of two. And he was able to drop Oscar Valdez as well in that fight. All right. And Valdez was undefeated. That was a unification match. And now we are here. All right. So let's talk about a little bit more about the two fighters. Uh, Kansai Sal, again, only one defeat. To Valdez, uh, he's an Olympic silver medalist, or I'm sorry, a Brazilian Olympic gold medalist. Okay, um, he fought Lomachenko in the amateurs. In fact, that is the uh, one of the only clips of uh, that you can find online where he's actually fighting the southpaw because Shakur is a southpaw fighter, and Casesa um, is an orthodox fighter. So I was kind of looking to see if Casesa uh, fought other southpaws. And I had to go back to his third professional fight uh, against uh, a guy called Hollis. He has a lot of losses, like four wins, 22 losses. It was his third professional fight. It was only a four-rounder. Um, Conceição stopped him in the third round. But I did take away some things in that fight. It wasn't that long ago. It was in 2017, so it was five years old. But I was able to take something. I'll talk about a little bit about that later in this video. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, he is coming off of a win against Xavier Martinez, who was undefeated. Uh, he uh, fought him right after losing to Oscar Valdez. And now he's going into this fight against Shakur Stevenson, right? Um, but he has a lot of experience. Obviously, he has a lot of amateur experience for a lot of good fighters. Um, he also beat um, he also beat Oscar Valdez in the uh, amateurs as well, I believe. And um, he has a lot of experience. You know, he has a good enough amount of pre professional fights. Um, and he fought some solid guys. Uh, one fight, one other fight that I, I should mention here is a fight against um, Louis Correa. It was about four fights ago. And um, I think you can make, you know, I, I watched it this morning. And I, I think you can make a strong argument that Conceição got a gift win in that fight. Correa was able to drop him in that fight, and Conceição lost a point in that fight for a low blow. And um, he fought against a really young, strong um, pressure fighter, you know, and he, gave, he got a lot of issues in that fight. And if you haven't seen that fight, it is on YouTube. The full fight is on YouTube. Louis Correa, check it out, because it does expose Conceição a lot in that fight. All right? Um, so you have Shakur Stevenson, again, young, hungry lion. Many people believe he's a pound for pound fighter already, uh, two division world champion already. All right. He's picked up titles at 126, 
uh, a title at 126 and now two titles here at 130. Um, great defense, great reflexes. Um, he's been in there with a good amount of different fighters too. He's fought pressure fighters. He fought other fighters that are tall, rangy fighters. He's fought all the southpaws. Um, he's an Olympic silver medalist, you know, um, well school fighter has a good camp, you know, he's under the tutelage of guys like Terrence Crawford, you know, and he's looking unstoppable at this point, you know, he's beating the best guy at 130. I didn't make uh, without too much trouble on top of that. And uh, this is a good fight for him. This is another really, really good name. I haven't seen any major flaws in his game, you know, and I think he's still getting better. He's getting bigger. Uh, I think there's, I think the one complaint about most people that watch his fights, I feel that he's boring sometimes. You know, he's not a KO artist. Uh, neither, is, neither is Conceição. But, um... He has scored some knockdowns, and he is one of the fighters that have lost the least amount of rounds. He doesn't get hit that much. I think I was listening to one of the commentators in one of his recent fights, and they said that Shakur averages uh, about, takes about five punches per round, you know, which is uh, one of the highest, uh, one of the lowest averages, punch averages in all of boxing right now. All right, so... um. This is how I see the fight going, you know. You have a really good, rangy fighter in Conceição against a great, rangy fighter. And I feel that even though Conceição is taller, I know he has a longer reach. He has a very good jab. He has good hand speed. You know, he has a good sense of control and distance he does um i think he just has too many flaws that shakur can exploit in this fight um especially when he's gonna there's gonna be a point in this fight and it's gonna be early on where he's gonna be fighting out of a high guard which is a big mistake for him you know i was watching some of the nakatilia fight with shakur stevenson and even though Shakur pretty much shut him out, I noticed that Shakur fought very, very cautiously in that fight. He didn't take any risk because he was fighting a taller guy that was rangy, that had a good jab. And even though Shakur didn't really catch many power punches in that fight, Nakatilia had a good idea. It was just poorly executed. He didn't let his hands go enough. But I believe Robinson will. Right, I do think he will let his hands go enough. I do think he will change levels, throws jabs to the body. Um, I think there's times where he's going to step in and be a little aggressive and be a little bit physical. But the problem is he's going to get countered a lot. I haven't seen Robson really fight a, a guy that's going to probe just as much as Shakur is. That's going to change levels. That's going to faint as much as Shakur is. And I think it's going to really draw off his rhythm. Not only that, but speaking on fighting out of that high guard, it's going to leave Shakur to attack him to the body more. He's definitely going to punch through the guard. He's going to punch around it. Um, you know, Robson is not that great of a defender. If you look at the Korea fight, you can see him getting dropped by a sweeping left hook, all right? He threw a left hook, I think he threw a lazy jab, and Korea countered him with a sweeping left hook. Robson had his hand up, but it wasn't tight, and he caught it right on the chin, was bleeding out of his mouth as early in the second round. Check that fight out. Shakur might not have the biggest punch, but he has a left hook that's quick enough that you won't see, times it right, he can drop you with that punch, I've seen him drop Nakatilia with that punch. I can see I seen him drop Oscar Valdez with that punch. And I, I think Shakur might catch uh Robson Conceso with that same punch. Another thing is Conceso, who's very tall and rangy, lunges a lot. Right? When he's throwing jabs, when he's throwing straight rights down to the body, you know, wherever, he lunges in a lot. And I think, you know, that's when I was saying, like, he's good at controlling distance, 
but he's fighting someone that's better at doing it. You know, someone that's better, has better reflexes and really, really fast feet. You know, knows how to get in out of danger quicker than most of his opponent's hands in, in Shakur Stevenson. So I can see Conceso lunging in a lot um, to land jabs, to throw, to, you know, to try to throw right hands and him getting countered with right hooks, him getting, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, with right hooks and him getting countered with some short left hands, some short uppercuts from Shakur Stevenson, especially when once you know, um, Conceição close the gap a little bit. I think at some point he's going to want to come in, throw combinations because he's good at, he throws very, very good combinations. But Shakur is going to roll a lot of those punches and counter what is left. I think what Conceição needs to do is do a little, take a little, a little piece of some of these fights, like the Nakatilia fight, like the Oscar Valdez fight. Oscar was doing a good job against Shakur, at least, um, you know, throwing hooks to uh, Shakur's body, especially when Shakur was like moving to his right, he would throw hooks to the body. It's a good way, it's a good scoring shot, and it's also a good shot to lead, you know, to lead with and then step in and throw more combination. I mean, Shakur is a very good defender, so he might get countered, you know, I mean, he's going to guard up if he has to, but it's a good way to close the distance and get inside on him a little bit. And Shakur is a good defender on the inside. But again, you got to do whatever you can to get in and crack this guy's guard and, and, and break him down some sort of way. I um, also seen that Oscar Valdez had a lot of success in landing those straight right hands. So I think, um, you know, if he, if, if, if Conceição could, he has to do a lot. You know, I don't see him pro much. I don't see him faint much. I do see him changing levels a lot, um, but he would have to change levels more. You know, try to throw some feints in there. Do something that can disrupt Shakur Stevenson's timing a little bit so you can land some shots, you know. Um, one of the biggest issues that I noticed with Conceição, and I think he would be a much better fighter if he fixed it. It's probably too late now because he's 33 years old. And I think he's kind of stuck in his ways. But even when I go back from watching to the uh, Hollis fight, his third professional fight, where he fought a, a southpaw, Conceição doesn't turn his punches over. And that's part of the reason why he lacks power. He slaps the majority of his punches. He slaps most of the time. So even with the combinations that he throws... He doesn't turn the punches over, you know? He throws, I can see that he's putting a lot of, he's sitting down on the shots, but he's slapping most of the time he's landing. He's laminating with a palm in his hand. You know, he does have a good hook. Um, he does sit down on the punches, and he does have good hand speed. Got good timing. He's a solid counter puncher, but he doesn't sit down on his punches. I mean, I'm sorry, he doesn't, turn his punches over he slaps the majority of the time and if you go back and watch that third fight of his even though he got a stoppage it's because of who he was facing you know um he's throwing combinations he's throwing flurries but he's slapping away and he still does it to this day i mean i think he's improved a little bit but um he would need to really work on that. You know, that is something that should have been corrected years ago because I think it takes away from, you know, when you watch the Valdez fight, and I was just watching some of it just now, um, I think he would have had a, a better chance if he were to, like, hurt, you know, Valdez because Valdez has been down. He's been hurt. He's been injured in fights, you know, and I think if he were to those earlier rounds where um, he was winning the rounds, I think if he was really like, you know, landing correctly and punching correctly, I think he could have at least dropped and, and got a knockdown in there against Valdez. You know, another thing, too, in that Valdez fight, it's the most obvious thing is that he was he was tired. He was gassed by the second half of that fight, you know, and Valdez was able to rally and win and totally um, dominate the second half of that fight. And that's why he won the decision. I don't think the scorecards really uh, match what I saw. 
But um, Valdez definitely won the second half of that fight because he just outworked him. And Caseso, who was doing a good job and, like, you know, keeping the distance and everything, um, failed miserably in the second half. He was tired. He was tying up a lot. He didn't have that same snap on his punches. You know, he was... He was just, he wasn't, the volume wasn't there, you know, and um, Valdez was able to take over. So I know I, I did most of this breakdown is, is, is talking about the strengths and weaknesses of Kansai simply because I do believe that Shakur has almost all of the advantages here. You know, I don't think Kansai is any more powerful than him. I don't think Kansai is more athletic than him. I don't think he has better defense. I don't think he has better reflexes. Um, you know, I don't think he is a better technician, you know, I think he has a height. I mean, we know he has a height and reach advantage, but even with that, I've seen Shakur fight guys that are taller with longer reaches and he was able to neutralize them anyway, you know? So, you know, I think Kaseisau has a, a good chance of, you know, maybe winning a round or two. You know, but I think Shakur has an even better chance and not just only like totally um, nearly shunning him out on points, but also knocking him down, you know, at least hurting him. Because, again, because Sal and the way that he lunges and reaches in, especially because I know he's going to go into a hard high guard, he's going to have to at some point. He's going to he's going to get hit enough to a point where he's going to go into a high guard and then Shakur is just going to go crazy at that point, you know. Um, Shakur, his probing, his probing, his jab setups, his uh, his 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 feints is going to disrupt Conceição because I'm watching him fight and I'm realizing that the guys he's fought, you know, outside of Oscar Valdez didn't really. I think Korea too. Korea did a good job. Those guys are going to, you know, those those guys did it. But Shakur is going to do it on a different level. And um, even if Shakur is forced to go backwards, he's going to be fine. Um, I think there's going to be points and periods of the fight when Caseso is going to slow down. And then Shakur is going to start walking him down in a later half and being a little bit more physical, fighting more on the inside. You know what I'm saying? And and he's going to be using this. He's going to do he's going to be using head control. He's going to be using his forearms and muscle down Conceição and outwork him on the inside on a later half of this fight. I think Shakur should try to go for the stoppage. You know, on the earlier rounds, you want to go and shoot jabs to the body, which we expect. Take some air out early. Work on that. And then once Conceição slow down. Similar to how he did against Valdez, because Valdez didn't do much in the first half. Valdez was just coming forward and staying in front of him. But Conceição was throwing a lot of punches, and then he slowed down dramatically in the second half. And that period, the course, should just focus on his defense, his counters, looking for good opportunities to counter and catch him with a good shot and working the body, using that jab, stabbing him in the stomach continuously. So in the second half of the fight, he can go for a stoppage. Or just dominate him for the remaining rounds, rounds. and that's the, that's the way I see this fight. I really don't see Casesa having much of a chance in winning this one here. You know, I mean, uh, everybody that I've seen Shakur face up to this point really only has a, a puncher's chance. They're not gonna be able to outbox him. They're not gonna be out, able to outwork him. You know, Shakur is just too good. You know, I think he. Um, I think his his chances of getting a real test are, are against guys like Haney or, or Lomachenko at 135. I don't really see these guys giving him much trouble at 130. All right, so that's my breakdown. I do think Shakur is going to win on points for sure, but I do think he has a good chance of stopping uh, Robson Caseso late due to just pure punishment because I think he's going to slow down dramatically, and I think he is going to get clipped with some shots in between exchanges um, or um, just him lunging in and getting caught. I think he's going to get caught early and get knocked down early. It's going to be a flash knockdown, but I think he might actually get hurt later in, uh, in, the, in the fight. All right. So anyway, um, that's my breakdown. Be sure to subscribe if you are new and hit the thumbs up if you like the content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.